This is Green Wave Hockey on Frontier Community Access Television. Hello again and welcome to Green Wave Hockey right here on FCAT Sports. Skate Dr. Lou Bordeaux here with you. Big tilt tonight when the Greenfield Green Wave are about to take on the South Hadley Tigers. I'm here on the Greenfield bench and I'm going to call in head coach Adam Bouchard right now. Booch. Hey Doc. Thanks. Always a pleasure. Welcome. Thank you. All right. It's been a lot of hockey going on lately. Uh, two big road wins last week. First one uh, down at Smead Arena in Springfield. Yeah, you know, coming off of that loss, playing a Chicopee team, uh, coming in with a 5 nothing shutout was a great way for the team to respond. And as you noticed, we uh, shook up the lines quite a little bit uh, coming into that game, and we're very happy with how the depth of our team is really playing. Well, shaking up those lines, we've got three really solid trios out there right now. Yeah, you know, when you look at that second game up at East Hampton, that 7-4 victory, you know, we were able to roll those three lines, uh, rotate the fourth line in a little bit as well, and re really being able to use that depth, I think, is something that we're going to be able to really look forward to for the rest of the year. What do you look for from South Hadley tonight? Well, you know, they're a 6-3-1 team. They're always tournament bound. Uh, they're a small, fast team, very similar to our style, puck possession, skill, uh, and speed. So I expect it to be a real fast game, not overly physical, but a lot of passing, a lot of shooting, a lot of skating today. And after tonight, I know we don't want to we don't want to look too far ahead, but there's a lot of hockey coming up for the Green Wave. That there is, that there is. But uh, we've always tried to stay focused one game at a time. Kind of that cliche as it is, but we're really focused on South Alley tonight. Come away with two points. Uh, when we're victorious, we will clinch playoff for the year. So that's really what we're focusing on right now. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Doc. All right. Starting lineups. National Anthem coming right up. And tonight you're going to be treated to our friends from Bear Country, Chris Collins and Todd Howe. So stay tuned. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield. Hello hockey fans, welcome once again to Collins Moylan Arena in Greenfield. The South Hadley Tiger is in town to take on the Greenfield Green Wave. Joined as always at the mic by Todd Howe. Our studio producer is Dave Reno. So there's probably not a hotter team in high school hockey right now in Western Mass, Todd Howe, than the Greenfield Green Wave. Winners of four of their last five, and they've shuffled some lines around, getting lots of scoring from lots of different people. Yeah, the last time we were on the air, we had uh, Brian Bowman and Sean O'Sullivan really doing a, a solid pair out in the ice in the scoring ranks, and they decided to split them up, and in the last two games, they've been able to put uh, five goals on the uh, scoreboard. They've got a South Hadley Tigers team coming in with a 6-3 and three record, 3-2 three and two in the Fay Division. Actually, 7-3-1, seven and, seven, and one, actually, yep. to be specific. What can we expect from the Tigers? Well, they're a solid team. I think you're going to see them play well. They've been uh, taken over by the flu lately, so they've struggled a little bit. He's got most of his team back tonight, and just recently, uh, one of the hottest players on their team is Anthony Seagal, the goalie, at a save percentage just below 95%, and they just named him captain the other night. And, of course, on the other end of the ice, Riley Drew has been very consistent, very solid. A couple of shutouts in his last few games. He's really seemed to be in his zone. He's only given up 11 goals this year. He's got a 92.7% save percentage, and he's a leader on the team. He's one of the captains himself. We'll take a one-minute break. We'll come back with more on this one. South Hadley in Greenfield, a hockey night in Greenfield on Bear Country 95.3. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Arista. Arista Networks pioneered software-driven cognitive cloud networking for large-scale data center and campuses. Arista.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. 
call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Webb's, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. Back out here at Collins Boiler Arena, Chris Collins, Todd Howe, our studio producer, is Dave Reno. Upcoming, the South Hadley Tigers and the Greenfield Green Wave. Of course, the Greenfield Green Wave, we mentioned Todd balanced scoring. They've also got a pretty solid back line. One guy who's come on in the last few games has been Jacob Bryant. He's emerged not only as a defensive sort of real st uh, stone back there, but he's also put some pucks in the net as well. And, and that's really the key to Greenfield for them going far. If they can get some pointing uh, from that defensive line, there's, there's nothing more you can ask for. He's a big guy. He's got probably one of the hardest shots in Western Mass. And if he's able to put that on net and get a solid, he's going to carry this team far. Looking ahead to, to the South Hadley Tigers, there are a couple of guys to look forward to in terms of offensive output and scoring. And uh, you know those guys better than I do, so why don't you run them down for me? Sure. Ryan Tucker's leading the team right now with 10 goals and four assists. He's a solid player. He's also up there with Mike Mazza. He's got four goals and seven assists. And Joe Meon has four goals and five assists. So they got the three of their top scorers after that. It's very balanced scoring. And you mentioned the goaltender, Anthony Seagal, who was recently named captain. And uh, I think Greenfield's going to have to stay out of the penalty box. We always say that, but the last time we saw these guys, there were a lot of penalties that got them into some trouble. They are able to come back and beat East Hampton handily, but it's one of those things where you don't want to give an advantage. And they spotted two goals to East Hampton in that game, and they were able to come back and win it. That's right. They were off to a slow start, and then they started taking penalties. And they got lucky, really, that East Hampton started doing the same thing later. They got tired, and they took some silly penalties and helped Greenfield get back in the game. And looking ahead, obviously a lot of expectation for Greenfield. If they win today, I believe they get the 10th win, and that qualifies them for the postseason. They were expected to go to the postseason. I think, though, anything less than a Western Mass championship is going to be disappointing to some fans of this team. They want to go far. They, when they first came up with the 3A championship, they won it back in 2008. And this may be the last year of the 3A championship with what the MIAA is doing. So it would be a nice little bookend for them and a great story. Yeah, and that's one of those stories that I don't think can be underscored enough. The idea by the MIAA to go to statewide. A lot of kids play in Western Mass for a chance to win a Western Mass championship. Very few Western Mass teams go to a state title game. I mean, it happens, but it's not that frequent. And I think, uh, you know, I think that to, to be able to win the last Western Mass Championship would a big, be a big thing for this organization. Absolutely. I was a part of the 2008 team, and I'd like to be a part of it on the radio for the uh, 2021 team. You also played when they won a Fay Wright Championship back in the early 80s as well. Way back when. And uh, one of the, uh, we talk about Bryant, and I played with his uncle Joel back in 81-82, uh, and he was a hell of a player who uh, one of the leading scorers in only three years of high school hockey. This is always an interesting rivalry. I, I can recall some very competitive games back in the day when we played with, the, with South Hadley. It's a, it's a program that's had its ups and downs like every other team in Western Mass, but it seems like they're having a pretty good job attracting numbers based on what I'm seeing on the ice right now. Yeah, it's nice. People talk about the cooperative teams, but at least we're able to put 20 kids on this ice. Uh, there are some years where you're, you're struggling with 14 kids and kids getting tired and worn out by the time the playoffs come along. So it's really nice to see a full board, get three, four lines out there, full sets of D and a couple goalies. And not to mention in Greenfield side with their co-op team, they've got a full JV squad as well. And you might see some of those younger players tonight, depending on what happens in this game. If Greenfield can get a lead, look, Greenfield pretty much runs with two lines when they're in, in a game that's competitive, but they'll, they'll definitely sprinkle in some of the younger players in situations where they're able to. Yeah, I was talking before the game with Coach Corey Lovett, and he felt they were going to come out with three lines tonight to start and then see how the game progresses from there. We'll take one more break, come back. National Anthem starting lineups and the opening faceoff of Hockey Night in Greenfield brought to you by Gilmore and Farrell Insurance on Bear Country 95.3.
we are set to get going here. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield, technically, but it's actually a matinee. This, this game was supposed to start at 6.30. They moved it up to 3.30 because apparently of an event at South Hadley High School, which is why we're starting a bit early, but that's the way it goes sometimes. So Greenfield is starting Savoy along with O'Sullivan. And as, as I understand it, so O'Sullivan, Savoy, and Roach. And uh, with uh, McGoldrick on defense, along with Kevin Bauman. I think he's rewarding that line. Like I said, they split up the lines a little bit. They got Bauman, their top scorer, is going to be on the second line tonight. And they really want to reward him for coming out and putting the puck in the net and playing strong. And I, I think it's a great sign. And uh, they'll be back, most of them will be back for next year. The Wave right now gathering down at their own net. South Hadley Tigers conferring at their bench. Always important, Todd Howe, to get out to a quick start and control the tempo, control the puck. All the things we talk about, all the basics in high school hockey, very important. Yeah, you got to set the tone early. It'd be nice to see, are we going to have a hard-hitting game? Are we going to see a game where there's a lot of skating around in the corners? Who knows what to expect, but that first shift is usually a good sign of what the coach has told the players in the locker room. Savoy will center O'Sullivan on the right and Aiden Roach on the left. Greenfield, of course, in the home white with green and black trim and South Hadley, black, orange, and white. Fifteen-minute periods in high school hockey, and we are ready to rock from Collins Moyle Arena. Neon centering off, and it goes into the Greenfield end of the building. Kevin Bauman. Up the left wing boards. Quick slap shot from the point, saved by Riley Drew. Rebound comes around to the far side. And Bauman goes up the boards, trying to clear. And they do. Battle for it in front of the Greenfield bench. South Hadley spins away with it. And there's going to be an offside call as Ryan Tucker tried to bring it in. But Laramie was too far ahead. Yeah, he just tried to uh, sneak in the line. It looked like Meon was actually uh, trying to get in the zone a little too quick. But he, he just can't make that shift at the blue line. Get the puck in the zone and carry it in. Faceoff will be just outside the Greenfield blue line. And Kevin, uh, Brian Bauman is out there along with Sammy Knight on the left. And faceoff controlled by South Hadley. Tiger slamming into the Greenfield zone. Back after it is Bryant. Bryant battling on the boards. They push it back up to the point. Laramie goes cross ice. Wrist shot from the point, blocked in front, goes behind the net. Swinging the boards. Back to the point again, Laramie, our wrister, and blocked in front and cleared. So a couple of good bids early for South Hadley. And they wave off the icing. Bauman's the first one after it. That's Brian Bauman behind the net. And it's forced around to the far side wall. South Hadley looking to clear it out. Still hemmed in at the blue line. Bauman's able to slam it back down low. Quick line change for Greenfield. And it's dumped out, and this is going to be icing. Interesting start to this game. Uh, immediately you can see that South Hadley uses their points well. Both times they went deep in the corner. They brought it out back to the D, got a couple shots off, got a couple tips, went D to D. So it looks like they utilize all five people in the offensive zone. Face off to the right of Seagull. Kyle Burns on the draw for Greenfield. Puck squirts through the slot, and it's skated around by Ryan Tucker and forced up the right wing boards. Back to center ice. Slam back in by Greenfield. And on a four check is Lenoy. Lenoy trying to barrel through. Seagal has to come out and cover it as Lenoy was bearing down. Nice hustle by Lenoy, just bothering the defenseman and pushing the puck back to the uh, defenseman and the goaltender who had to cover up for a faceoff in the offensive zone for Greenfield while they, they're changing their lines again. Face off to the left of Seagal. And this time it's the same starting formation. Savoy is out there with O'Sullivan and Roach. Draw controlled by South Hadley and they're able to push it out to center ice. Backhanded into the Greenfield zone. MJ Pollen backhands it out. Big hit in front of the Greenfield bench. And now Kevin Bauman brings it up. Bauman blocked in the pass in and then it's pushed up by Pollen. Bauman and Pollen out there together. So defensive changes for Greenfield as well. 
O'Sullivan pushes the puck into South Hadley territory, centering pass, controlled by the Tigers, and they clear. Kevin Bauman, back up ice. Left side to Roach. Aiden backhands it into South Hadley territory. On a four-check is Savoy. Savoy centering pass just over the stick of O'Sullivan. And South Hadley is able to skate it out. And they dump it in behind Riley Drew. 12.41 to go, period one, no score. Roach now with it. Roach trying to backhand away from containment. Up the boards, Kevin Bauman over skates. And Savoy sends it in, and it's going to be icing. They'll bring it down and face it off to the left of Riley Drew with 12.29 to go in the period. Well, it does look like we're going to see the body thrown around a little bit today. There's been a lot of good checks in the uh, center zone, and both teams are playing well, taking the body. It, it, right now, a very strong game. Brunel on the draw against Bauman. Bauman wins it, pushes it back into the corner. It's pushed to the near wall and skated out. This is Sammy Knight dumping it into the South Hadley territory. Tigers bang it around the boards. And then on a four check back to the point, shot by McGoldrick and a save by Seagal. Saw it all the way. First good bid for Greenfield. Yeah, Porter Clancy was blocking the goaltender's view. Just couldn't get a stick on it, went right into his chest, it was a good save. Face off will be to the right of Seagal. Another quick line change for the Wave. They're gonna bring out the Barnes line with Lenoy on the left side. They're gonna try to get that puck back to Bryant on the draw. Face off, goes bouncing in front of the net, still loose, and goes to the far boards. That was dangerous. Shot from the point does not make it to the net, and it's backhanded out by South Hadley. Big hit in front of the penalty bench as the puck is forced into the Greenfield territory. Bowie Harris back to get it. Cupped in though by the Tigers. Now Bryant has it, Bryant. Headman pass, good pass to Barnes. Tape to tape, two on two. Barnes, wrist shot, just wide. Big rebound comes off, and they couldn't convert it. That was a great pass, penalty coming up. It's gonna be on South Hadley, and it's gonna be a tripping penalty on the Tigers. So Greenfield will get its first power play. Great outlet pass by Bryant. He fed um, Kyle Barnes in the middle. Kyle Barnes had a good shot. It was a nice play by the goaltender, Camus, because he was able to poke away the rebound. And then when they fought the puck in the corner, South Hadley just got the stick on the skates and tumbled the guy, and Greenfield goes on the power play for two minutes. Caden Lawrence, I believe, got whistled for that trip, so it's a two-minute penalty. Face off to the left of Seagal with 11.25 to go in the first. So Greenfield goes five on four. Draw goes back to the point as they set up the box in one. They dump it around behind the net. Sean O'Sullivan, now Bryant pinches, comes after it, Bryant at the dot, short ang angle shot saved, rebound comes around, centering pass, blocked in front, Bryant still has it, turnaround wrist shot blocked in front, after it is Bauman now, this is Bryant, and they try to slide in front, backhander blocked in front, couple of good bids for Greenfield, Bauman now with it, Bauman finds O'Sullivan, shot, score! O'Sullivan lights the lamp and it's 1-0. First advantage goes to Greenfield on the power play, and they take they take advantage. They score on a great play. Bauman had his head up, made a great pass over through the slot, and put it through the goaltender right underneath his wing. So Sean O'Sullivan makes it one nothing Greenfield on the feed from Bauman, power play goal at 10:51. It's one nothing Wave. Great start for the Wave. That's what they wanted. We're less than five minutes in. They're up one to nothing. Barnes and Lenoy out there on the line. And draw goes back to Paulin, who bangs it up the boards. Knocked right back in. And they go cross ice. And headman pass too far ahead. This is going to be icing. We'll bring it down and face it off to the right of Riley Drew with a one nothing Greenfield lead. South Hadley just has to settle down a little bit. Tough break on that penalty. It was one of those plays that was in their defensive zone. It wasn't an offensive rush or anything, so you hate to take it. Um, so now they're gonna just try and work their shift and get forward. They haven't had many opportunities on Drew. Draw goes into the corner. Kevin Bauman now skates it behind his own net. Backhands it up the wall. Looking for Lenoy, kept in though. Now Pollen goes into the corner, battling for it. As the Tigers trying to get something going. Centering pass at the dot. Shot blocked, goes behind the net again. As South Hadley cycling down, trying to get something going. And Greenfield trying to clear. They keep it in though to the Tigers. Pollen swings the net and goes up the far wall. Slapper from the point, saved by Drew. That was Cameron Pete with the shot. 
Pollen now. Up ahead to Illinois. Kept in though. Pete again shot blocked to the side. And Kevin Bauman slams it around looking for Pruzak. And finally Greenfield is able to clear. Pruzak now bumping in front of his own bench at the red line. Up ahead to Illinois. Illinois one on three. Cuts back. Greenfield gets a quick line change. Illinois still battling in the corner. Getting some help over there. Behind the net from Aiden Roach. Roach kicks it around. And South Hadley battling for it. No, here's a steal at the dot. Roach could not fire it as he, the puck ended up on his stick. O'Sullivan now with it behind the net. O'Sullivan back to the point. As Greenfield looking for another tally here. South Hadley hemmed in. And the whistle as the net dislodged. They'll face it off to the left of the goaltender, Seagull, with 9-12 to go. One of the biggest things Greenfield does well is really does well cycling down in the corners. They're constantly moving, constantly keeping along the boards, and they're getting some great opportunities there. On South Hadley's end, their point men might be the difference because they're keeping the puck in the zone once they get it in there. Bauman centering Knight and Clancy on this draw. So really shaking the lines up. Back to the point. Goes to Bryant. Bryant, quick wrist shot, one-timer. Centering pass, blocked in front by Knight. Bryant pinches, keeps it in. Bryant goes into the corner, switches with Bauman. And Bryant backhands it around the South Hadley net to the far boards. And the Tigers trying to clear it. Having a tough time getting it out of their own end. They slam it around to the near side boards. Knight on the four check, trying to keep it in. Bauman couldn't control the loose puck. And the Tigers are able to clear. They dump it into Greenfield territory. Bryant on the near wall, up ahead to Knight. Knight up the left side, three on two break. Knight. Forced to the boards, puck into the corner. Bauman goes over to help out. And South Hadley is able to wing it around the far side. Bowie Harris with it now at center ice. And Bowie slams it right back in on Seagal. Gloves it, leaves it for his guy. Quick line change for the wave. 8.04 to go, first period. 1-0 Greenfield on a power play goal by Sean O'Sullivan. Now here's a steal at center ice. Kyle Barnes, Kyle Barnes moving in. Nice poke check by the South Hadley defender to keep Barnes off the puck. And the puck goes down into the corner. Matt Wilhite from Athol on a four check for Greenfield. Goes back to the point, MJ Pollen. Pollen pushes it back down behind the net as the wave, big hit behind the net. Trying to slide it up the boards. South Hadley doing their best to keep it away from this, the heavy four check of Greenfield. And they're able to clear, finally. Pollen goes off the boards. And South Hadley looks gassed, they need a line change. Yeah, they've had a lot of play in the defensive zone. These guys There's a steal, the Roach goes in, shot, save on the turnover. And a whistle and the net dislodged again. That was almost a costly mistake. And now, like you said, they're just getting tired. They were on there probably in the uh, south out of the offense or defensive zone for probably the last minute and a half. And it's just too long of a shift for them, and they weren't able to handle it, and the defenseman gave up a loose puck. And it, it was almost a, it was a solid scoring opportunity and almost a goal. 7.21 to go in the period. 1-0 Greenfield. Adam Savoy on the draw. And he is centering Roach and O'Sullivan. Off the draw, O'Sullivan from the top of the slot. Shot goes wide. Rebound behind the net. Savoy battling for it. O'Sullivan now has it. O'Sullivan tries to slide it in front. Goes cross ice to the far wall. Roach on a four check, battling for it. And it's hemmed in the corner. O'Sullivan now chasing it behind the net. Digging in the corner, trying to get it loose. Trying to set up Savoy on the far boards. Savoy comes away with it. Backhander blocked in front. Second backhander saved by Seagal. This looks like a power play. They're really keeping in the zone strong, and they're controlling the play. They're Roach, backhander in front, trying to feed O'Sullivan. Couldn't do it. McGoldrick keeps it in and slams it back into the zone. This, is the, this game's been played mostly in South Hadley's end this first period. Greenfield's winning almost every 50-50 puck. There is a steal. Stolen. And moving in. Could not get the backhander. And we've got a whistle. Hooking. A hooking call on South Hadley. Well, there was a reason why that Greenfield player slowed down. It was Bauman on the forecheck. That's because he got hooked. Yeah, Bauman made a good drive to the net and really took away a scoring chance. It was probably a good penalty in that case. Bauman would have been alone on the goaltender. He was even looking at the referee hoping for a penalty shot. So Cameron Peake gets the hooking call. Two-minute penalty. 
Another power play for Greenfield. They're one for one on the power play tonight. The draw goes back, but bounces off balance, stick out. Back to the Greenfield end. Bauman's going to swing around his own net. That's Kevin Bauman. And a turnover in the high slot, but skated out by Greenfield. Pruzak now with it. He's got Barnes. Too far ahead of Barnes. Pruzak gets knocked down. Barnes backhands it back. Now Barnes circling over the top of the circle. Back to the point. And they bounce it over to Pruzak on the left wing. Shane Pruzak with it. Trying to set up the man advantage situation. Bauman with the shot. Blocked in front. Back to the point. Pruzak now. Over to Kevin Bauman on the boards. Quick uh, pass across. Ice shot. One timer goes wide. As the wave now with it still. Circling out. Backhander in front by Barnes is blocked to the far wall. Back to the point. Wrist shot. Score! It may have been tipped on the way through. McGoldrick took the shot. I think Barnes got a piece of it. And it's 2-0 Greenfield. What a difference a power play makes. That's two for two in the power play. It was a great play by the defenseman. It wasn't a hard shot. He wasn't trying to put it in the net. He was trying to make it so it was tippable, and that's just what happens. Kyle Barnes tips it in for the power play goal. So O'Sullivan and Barnes convert on power play goals to make it 2 nothing Greenfield with 5.31 to go in period number one. Sometimes you guess what's going to happen when you say stay out of the penalty box. Absolutely. South Hadley looks like they're, they're absolutely shell-shocked at this point. Greenfield has carried the play this entire game. And battle for it in front of the Greenfield bench. South Hadley, that's going to be just barely missed being offside. They go cross ice, and it's skated up by Aiden Roach. Aiden Roach into South Hadley territory, being bumped. Roach has got Savoy out there with him. He's got O'Sullivan as well. O'Sullivan has it behind the net, tries to slide it in front, blocked. Now Roach in the corner, bumping with the South Hadley defenseman. Roach sliding around, centering pass. We are even strength. This is not a power play, but it sure feels like one again. South Hadley behind the net. O'Sullivan on a four check. Savoy in there helping out. And a whistle, and it's going to be a hand pass. And the faceoff will be outside of the South Hadley end of the rink. A lot of time spent in that uh, South Hadley defensive zone. Greenfield is playing well. They got a hand pass. Looks like they're sending it all the way down to the defensive zone. 4.48 to go, first period, 2-0 Greenfield, face off to the left of Riley Drew because of the hand pass. It's going to be Joe Meon against Brian Bauman on the face off. Draw control by Greenfield, goes to the corner, MJ Pollen with it. Pollen up the boards and out to center ice. Sammy Knight battling for it on the front of the penalty bench, now it comes back the other way. South Hadley with it, forces it to the boards, this is Silabokos with it. Silabokos crosses, swings around the net, and they lose control at the circle, and Greenfield's able to clear the zone. Brian Bauman now trying to battle it into the south half of the end of the, the rink. Goes cross ice. Now we have a whistle and a hooking call. And this one is going to be on Greenfield, and it's going to be, and he knew it too, right to the bench. That's on Kevin Bauman. Yeah, I didn't see the play. It was behind the play. Had nothing to do with the play, but you're right. He knew exactly where he was going. He was heading over there before the whistle was blown. So South Hadley with their first power play with 4.14 to go in period one. Face off is to the left of Riley Drew. So let's see what South Hadley brings to the table in terms of a man advantage. Draw goes back to the high slot. Back to Larrabee at the point. Larrabee on the right side to Mazza. Back to Larrabee. Shot is blocked through the far boards. Bryant slams into Larrabee. Or Mazza, rather. And Mike McGoldrick now battling for it for Greenfield in the corner. And McGoldrick slamming into Mazza behind the net. McGoldrick tried to backhand up the boards. Nearly centered it in front of his own net. And South Hadley comes away with it. Nope. Now a battle for it by the dot. And Mike Mazza with it now. Mazza at the point. Mazza. Was cross ice to Larrabee. Larrabee winds up. Save Riley Drew. Big rebound in front. Shot blocked in front. Two saves by Drew. Two solid saves by Drew. That could have easily gone in. Centering pass. Back to Larrabee at the right point. Larrabee after it. Bow! Oh, what a hit on Larrabee. As Greenfield picking up the hitting. That was Jake Croto who laid the smack down on him. A minute to go on the man advantage. 3.17 to go in the period. Mazza with it now in front of the penalty bench. 
Winds it up across center ice. Mazza over the blue line. Oh, penalty coming up on a trip. And that's going to be on Greenfield's number four, Adam Savoy. So it's going to be a two-man advantage for South Hadley. 44 seconds left on the first penalty, so it'll be a five on three. And this is the opportunity for South Hadley to get back in the game. This should be a little bit easier. They're trying to get their points involved. So now with only three guys on the ice for Greenfield, there'll be one guy probably covering both points. They'll have an opportunity to do that. Face off to the left of Riley Drew. And they actually got uh, they got Matt Wilhite for that trip. I thought that was on uh, Savoy, but it's on Wilhelm. Face off goes out of the zone. Back to get it is Aiden Sullivan for South Hadley. And headman pass on the left wing. Brian in pursuit. Rams the South Hadley player into the backboards. Mazza after it. Mazza bumping again with Bryant as a five on three situation. They try to slide it in front, skips over the stick, partially deflected by Bauman. Goes back to the point. This is Will Height. Shot goes wide of the net and comes all the way around and out. Seven seconds to go on the two man advantage for South Hadley. Headman pass for Mazza. Mazza in the high slot. Over to Tucker. Ryan Tucker backhands it back. Kevin Bowen is back out there, so it's five on four for a minute 10 for Greenfield. Or for South Hadley, rather, Greenfield with the penalty. And this is Tucker going in. Shot saved by Riley Drew. Rebound cleared wide. Back to the point. It's over to Cameron Pete. Pete's shot. Fanned on it. Maz ends up with it. Maz swings around. Tries to slide it in front, and it's stolen out and cleared by the Greenfield defender. All the way down to Seagull. 42 seconds left to go on the man advantage for South Hadley. And now this is... Brunel tried to slide it in front. Back to the left point. Wrist shot wide of the net. Comes back around to Ryan Tucker on the right point. Tucker kicks it back. Shot by Pete goes wide of the net. To the far boards it goes and cleared up but not out. Puck in the slot. Dangerous. Two and on it's one. skated out by Bryant. Two on one break. Bryant's got Barnes. Bryant looking for Barnes. Skips through Seagal. Penalty coming up. And this is going to be, I believe, on... It's a hooking penalty on South Hadley. So that will negate the man advantage, which only had three seconds left on it. And a minute six left in the period. So South Hadley will be pretty much five on four for the most of the rest of this period. That was a nice play by Brian. He slid across slowly to Barnes, and Barnes was hooked. And I was watching the referee. He didn't call that right away. And I, I think the groan from the coaching staff might have helped him a little bit. But now Grief will go on the power play in just three seconds for the last minute of this period. Draw goes back to McGoldrick. McGoldrick back up the boards. Now it's five on four Greenfield with 56 seconds to go in the period. So the third penalty for South Hadley in this game. Puck hits the Greenfield bench, so they'll face it off right there. With 51 seconds to go in the period, 146 to go in the man advantage for Greenfield. Greenfield's uh, played the main advantage well. They were two for two on the power play so far. That's both their goals on the board. So they'd love to go into the uh, locker room up three nothing. Face off is going to be right at center ice. As the puck hit the Greenfield bench. Bauman has O'Sullivan out there with him. On the power play along with McColdrick and Kevin Bauman. And on the far side, Aiden Roach. Back to Kevin Bauman. Up to his brother, Brian. Cross ice to McGoldrick. Mikey McGoldrick now. Up to, to Brian Bauman. Bauman jukes away. He's got Roach in the high slot. Bauman, short side over the net. Puck comes to the far boards. Kept in by Kevin. O'Sullivan now in the corner to Brian. Back to Kevin. Kevin shoots and a save by Seagal. Quick wrister from the point. They'll face it off to his left with 23 seconds left in the period. Seagal saw it the whole way. You got Brian out here with the big shot trying to get something off in the last 23 seconds of the period on this power play. Face off will actually be to the right of Anthony Seagal. 110 to go, 118 rather to go on the man advantage. 23 seconds to go in the period. Draw goes back to the point. Bryant with it. Bryant now. A wrist shot tipped wide of that by Bauman. Goes to the far boards. Skated around the high slot. Here comes a uh, Roach, rather. Roach trying to slide it in front. 
Roach down behind the net, looking for someone to throw to short side. Goes wide of the net. Bauman after it. Or Sullivan actually shot on goal, goes wide, and that will end the first period. We played one period from Collins Willen Arena in Greenfield. At the end of one period, it's Greenfield two, South Hadley nothing. We'll resurface the ice, come back, and talk more about the first period of this one. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield, brought to you by Gilmore and Farrow Insurance. Back out here at Collins Mullen Arena, Hockey Night in Greenfield, a matinee edition, brought to you by Gilmore and Farrow Insurance at the end of one period. The Greenfield Green Wave lead the South Hadley Tigers 2 0. Not a lot bad to say about Greenfield's performance in that first period, just a solid period of hockey. They played well. They outshot South Hadley 10 to 6. It was a solid, solid period for them. I mean, we we were looking to our left most of the period, and I'm surprised the shots were that close at 10 to 6. But the difference is power plays. Uh, Greenfield is two for two with one to start the second period with, and South Hadley is 0 for two. Power play goals by Sean O'Sullivan, and I believe they gave that goal to Kyle Barnes on the tip off the Mikey McGoldrick wrist shot from the point. We didn't get an official scoring on that, but. It was pretty obvious that it was redirected. And, uh, and like you said, we, you know, we spent most of that period in the South Hadley end of the, of the ice, which if you're Greenfield, that's what you want to see. But for South Hadley, I mean, except for that two-man advantage, which they came up short on, I didn't see a whole lot of offensive output. Uh, they were spending a lot of that period running around their own end. They're going to have to change that if they want to make this competitive. Yeah, they were struggling. Once, uh, once Greenfield got in the zone, Greenfield is so solid on cycling in the corners and keeping the puck on their sticks that South Hadley had a tough time getting out of the zone. And I would guess the uh, amount of time was more than half in the South Hadley defensive zone. And when South Hadley did get it in their zone, they're always looking for the point. And if Greenfield catches on that, that's really going to give uh, Greenfield another advantage. Some solid minutes also for Greenfield uh, from Matt Wilhite, Sammy Knight, Porter Clancy. I mean, these are names we didn't see a lot in the first time around when they played East Hampton. Obviously, these guys have started to work their way into more of a regular shift, and it certainly seems like they belonged out there. They're playing well, and it's going to help Greenfield with the wind. If they can get three lines out there on a regular shift, that's even better for them, and there were not a lot of solid scoring opportunities for South Hadley, so it's not like you're putting them out there at a risk. They're, they're playing their own, they're playing the body, and they're keeping the puck out of the zone. And Riley Drew with six good saves, a couple of tough shots there, and it wasn't tested, I don't think, as much as maybe you, you would have expected to be in that period, but he had to come up big a couple of times. He's done. He's played well all year. He, he's really going to be the backbone. And you get Brian in front of him just pushing people around. The body checking by the Greenfield defenseman, all of them have been solid this whole game. Yeah, and Bryant has not been shiny. There is MJ Pollen and Kevin Bauman, although he did, you know, he did get called for that uh, tripping penalty. But the physical play, I think, is a, is a good sign as well for Greenfield. We'll take a one-minute break. We'll come back. We're between the first and second periods. It's Greenfield 2, South Hadley nothing. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield. Brought to you by Gilmore and Farrell Insurance. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by... Arista. Arista Networks pioneered software-driven cognitive cloud networking for large-scale data center and campuses. Arista.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Webbs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. Mullen well, Arena, Chris Collins, Todd Howard, studio producers Dave Reno. We're at between the first and second periods. The Greenfield Green Wave comfortably out in front of the South Hadley Tigers by a count of 2 0. Although they've got some good hockey players uh, as I look at and remember that first period, uh, Todd. Mike Mazza certainly seems like he's a threat in the slot. Also, Caden Laramie had a lot of shots from the point. They used their points very, very well. Hasn't resulted in a goal as yet, but they definitely moved the puck around. Yeah, they do a really good job getting back to the point. And immediately once they get to the point and they see that shot possibly coming in, you see the forwards going to the net, just looking for a tip, getting in the way of Drew, anything they could do. 
I have to say this is a solid hockey game. This is a really fun game to watch. It is. Also, famous uh, Silobokos had quite a few um, good minutes out there. And Ryan Tucker, as you mentioned, he's one of their, their snipers. He hasn't really had what I would call a quality opportunity on net, although there have been a couple of opportunities from the point. But Riley Drew has been a good job being able to see all those pucks, and there have been some blocks in front. So Greenfield's done a good job also keeping the slot clear. Very, very important when you've got a team that likes to feed the point. You've got to make sure that those guys are out of there to avoid tip-ins. Yeah, Greenfield's playing good team defense because they're getting in the way too. And they're blocking them right at the point. So they, if they're going to get the shot off, it's going to be get off quicker. And a, really a good balanced attack. As you mentioned, Greenfield running three lines out there. The last time we saw them, they ran pretty much two lines. And they, they inter, interspersed some, some of the younger guys in there. But for the most part, the last time we saw them when they played East Hampton, they did run the two-line thing. Having more than, than two lines obviously allows the coaching staff to mix things up a little bit. Adam Bouchard certainly has some good combinations. I haven't seen a combination that hasn't worked tonight. No, they're doing really well. Coach Bouchard, I think, is just making a statement that he wants to get all three lines ready. Now they're coasting toward the playoffs. They win today. We think they'll have their, their 10 wins in. They'll qualify for the playoffs. They're undefeated in the right division. So they're doing everything right to get to that playoffs and, and get a good ranking. Also, coming up, this is the second of four regular season broadcasts of Hockey Night in Greenfield. Our next broadcast is next week in this same building as Chicopee Comp comes to town. And then we're going to wrap up on February 25th, I believe, when Amherst comes to town. And then whatever happens in the postseason, I'm certain we're going to be out there uh, following this team. Because this is an exciting team. As I said last time, I don't think Greenfield High School hockey has ever been quite as hot as it is right now. And uh, if they're going to win a championship, I think this is the year I think we can expect them to go deep. I do expect them to go deep. We've done the playoffs a couple times last two or three years, and we've kind of watched them one and done. And I think they're ready to take that next step. A lot of the players on this ice now have gone through that. And really, they're tired of it. And they're prepping for it. That's what the season goal is. They're not just looking at the division title. That's just step one. We'll take another break. We'll come back and give you the second half, or second period, actually, of this one. It's Hockey Night in Greenfield from Gilmore and Farrell Insurance. Greenfield leads South Hadley 2 nothing. Back out here at Collins Boiling Arena, Hockey Night in Greenfield. Greenfield leads South Hadley 2 nothing on a pair of power play goals. So Greenfield will start this period, Todd Howe, with a power play, 55 seconds to go on this man advantage as Greenfield moves left to right, and they love to make it three for three on the power play. They gotta be coming out confident. They have a fresh sheet of ice. There's nothing better to start a period with a power play and a fresh sheet of ice, so we'll see how they do. They, they've done well. The, the pass that's worked is going from uh, the right to left, slot side, quick shot, and both times it's snuck in. Larry Camus, the coach of South Hadley, what do you think he was saying at, uh, in the break of the locker room? I think his first comment was, hey, we're playing even with them if we stay out of the box. We need to stay out of the box. We can't have a little ticky-tack penalty. They had one good penalty. This is the last one, and they haven't scored on it yet. So you kind of take what it comes, but he's going to stay out of the box. He can't give Greenfield the main advantage. They're too powerful. And plus, that Greenfield power play, that's, that's really the original first unit of Roach, O'Sullivan, and Brian Bauman is the bound the power play unit. And plus, the back liners have just been solid. No matter what combination Adam Bouchard puts out there, they seem to be doing a really good job of getting that puck, clearing it, and playing physical in the corners. Yeah, they're really controlling the puck in the offensive zone. And that's been the difference. You do that five on five, and now you take a man off the ice, make it five on four. They're controlling it even more. They're taking their time, and they're getting some solid shots off. I'll tell you, though, I would not want to go in the corner with either MJ Pond or Jacob Bryan. They're just huge kids. And, and in Bryan's case, I mean, he seems to, like, he seems to enjoy the contact. It's like he's into it. He, he loves to throw that big body around. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't picked him up laughing on the mic after he hits somebody <laughs> hard into the boards. But maybe we'll have to bring the mic just a little lower. It's a game of hitting. That's what they always say. Both teams gathering in front of their own bench as we're going to start this second period again with Greenfield on a five-on-four advantage. And let's see who they bring out. They're gonna bring out O'Sullivan, Bauman, and Roach again. And it looks like Bryant is out there. And actually, they're gonna run O'Sullivan on the left point. So interesting. Bauman in the draw at center ice as we start the second period with Greenfield up 2-0. Puck 
Puck forced into the south half of the end. Kept in, though, at the point by Bryant. Bryant battling for it on the right point. Trying to knock it loose. Puck is tied up. And they finally clear. Mazza coming out with it. Mazza on a break. Blocked and broken up. And they're coming back the other way. Headman pass to Bauman. This is Brian Bauman. Centering pass. Quick shot one time by Bryant. Saved by Seagal. And South Hadley clears the zone. Bryant just got a little soft wood on that one. Didn't get everything he wanted on it. Clearing pass picked up, though, by Mazza. Wrist shot goes wide. 15 seconds to go on the man advantage. And they bang it up the right wing boards to Bauman, and it clears down, and it's going to be icing. So you never want to ice the puck when you have a man advantage. So they're coming back down next to Riley Drew. There's only five seconds left on the power play. It looks like South Hadley will kill off their first, pe first penalty on the game. And we'll go 2-0 with 14 minutes left. Face off to the right of Riley Drew. On the draw for South Hadley is Joe Meon. He's a scoring threat for sure. One thing Greenville has to do is be careful of the guy coming out of the box, see if he has an offensive advantage there. Greenfield wins the draw, and it's Lenoy now. Dumping it down behind the net. Pruzak on a four-check goes to the far boards. Puck is knocked loose and smacked back up the wall and out to center ice. McGoldrick back to get it in his own end. Mikey McGoldrick from South Deerfield, Massachusetts swings the net. McGoldrick up the right side. McGoldrick's got ahead of steam. Is poked off the puck nicely, but he's able to stay with it and backhand it behind the South Hadley net. Behind the net, up the boards it goes to Lenoy. Actually, that's Barnes. Barnes avoids a hit behind the net, tries to slide it in front. Puck is still behind the net. Barnes still on a four check on the far boards. Pokes it back up to the point. And kept there at the point temporarily by Cam Rice and then slammed out by South Hadley. Puck is, pucked up. Puck is poked up to the middle of the ice. And here come the Tigers. And they backhand it to the far wall. After it is Lenoy. Lenoy lifts it out of the zone to center ice. Going after it is Pruzak. And this is going to be a whistle. And offsides, I believe, is the call. Yeah, Pruzak just couldn't get out of the zone. It snuck out. It was trying to get a quick rush in there. It just didn't work out. Just offsides. 13.02 in the second period. 2-0 Greenfield. Savoy out there centering Roach and O'Sullivan. Face off at the South Hadley blue line. And it's poked back in by Greenfield. Back to get it is Laramie. Laramie. Headman pass, and they try to feed Mazza at the blue line. Actually, this is Brunel, broken up nicely on a poke check by Savoy, and Savoy is able to clear it up the boards to Roach. Aiden Roach now, poked off the puck, and Bauman has to cycle back to avoid the offsides. It was cross ice to Paulin. MJ Paulin on his own end, loses control of it. It's poked to the far boards, that was dangerous. MJ Pollen back in the corner, relieved of the puck behind the net by South Adley. And the Tigers have it. Back to the point. Joey Seagal now battling on the boards. And it's cleared out by Greenfield. Poked ahead. This is Aiden Roach. Knocks it into the corner, gets hit hard. O'Sullivan now bumping behind the net. Physical play picking up in the corners. Clearing pass up but not out. And now Sullivan has it for South Hadley, trying to push it up the boards, and Mazza is able to clear it out. Brunel now on left wing forecheck. Brunel, tough shot, just wide of the net. Goes far boards. Good bid there for South Hadley. Puck at the dot now, forced over Laramie. That's Dylan Laramie, back to the point. Wrist shot blocked in front. Goes to the far boards. Greenfield hemmed in a bit here. O'Sullivan's able to skate it out. Sean O'Sullivan, he has a goal. Pulling down the left side, O'Sullivan. Slides in front, nobody on the doorstep though. What a play by O'Sullivan. Bauman wasn't quite there yet. Shot by Bauman goes wide. Seagal got a piece of it. Now O'Sullivan with it in the high slot. O'Sullivan backhands to Bauman. Bauman in the left wing corner swings the net. Bauman goes back to the point to Bryant. Bryant, big wrist shot goes wide. Fireboards Bowie Harris backhands into the corner. O'Sullivan slides in front. Puck is loose. Turnaround shot goes wide. Bauman after it. Greenfield has South Hadley hemmed to the far boards. They try and backhand it in front. Out there on a four check is Sammy Knight and Cam Rice. Puck goes around the net and it comes back out to Dilabokos who clears the zone. 
10.43 to go, period two. Harris over skates it. And penalty coming up as that puck caromed off of Bowie Harris's stick. And they were forced a hook to try and block a breakaway. Harris just lost his skate, lost an edge, fell down. And when he got up, he got in the way of the uh, South Hadley offensive player going for the goal. It was a good call. It was interference. Took away a scoring opportunity. And now South Hadley has a chance to cut the lead in half. So Bowie goes bye-bye for two minutes. And it's a man advantage. The second power play opportunity for South Hadley. Face off to the left of Riley Drew with 10.39 to go in the period. And Greenfield will have to try and kill this penalty. They slam it down to the South Hadley end of the ice. So let's see what the Tigers bring to the table for their second power play opportunity. Kate Laramie up ahead to Seagal who was hanging on the blue line. That's Joey Seagal. And this is Matthew Brunel. Pushes it into Greenfield territory, but wristed right back out. All the way down to the South Hadley. End of the ice by McColdrick. Laramie now winding up on his own end. Being hassled by Savoy. Now to Mazza. Mazza is able to deflect it out of the zone. Goes right back to Greenfield's defense, and they send it right back into the South Hadley zone. Just not strong puck control right now by South Hadley. They can't get it out of the zone to get set up. Laramie to Brunel on the left wing. Brunel avoids a hit. And it's pushed in by Mazza. Greenfield now forces it behind the net. It's Joey Seagal on a four check. And it's forced to the near boards. Back to Laramie at the point. Laramie to Mazza. Mazza cycling back to Laramie. Laramie fakes the shot. Passes to left wing. And it's backhanded behind the net. Mazza on a four check being bumped behind the net. 41 seconds to go on the main advantage. Back to Laramie at the point. Wrist shot. Blocked in front. Back to the far point. Shot goes wide and comes all the way back around to the left point to Laramie again. Laramie to Mazza. Mazza on the left wing. Behind the net looking for a give and go. And the pass goes through the slot all the way back down to South Hadley's end of the ice. Good break for Greenfield there. They had the good give and go. Just the pass was a little bit off. Didn't touch anybody. The Tigers now. Pete backhands it up the boards. Looking for Th Silabokos, and it's right back down on Seagal. So seconds to go on the man advantage, five to be exact, and will be at full strength. So Greenfield kills off two power plays. Headman pass again, two on two. Bowie Harris is out of the box. Wrist shot saved by Riley Drew. He hangs on, covers up with 8.32 to go in the period. Good play by Drew there. The puck came in, he made a good catch, but he took the whistle. He gets that four men off, get them off the ice, get a fresh set out there and keep moving on. Greenfield did a good job killing that power play at center ice. They never got into the zone. They had a good diamond set up. They did well. Faith off to the left of Riley Drew and puck controlled by Greenfield and they cleared the zone. Penalty coming up. Interference is going to be the call. They're going to get Aiden Sullivan who got hung up at center ice with, I believe he got hung up with uh, Shane Pruzak so Aiden Sullivan goes away for two minutes. That was a nice set play by Greenfield. They won the face off. They brought it back to the defenseman in the corner. He flipped it out, trying to go over the point men of South Hadley. And when the South Hadley defenseman saw that, all he could do was grab him, squeeze him, hold him tight. Face off to the left of Tony Seagal. As Greenfield now with their fourth power play. They're two for three on the power play tonight. Brian Bauman, back to Roach. Roach. Tried to backhand it and skips over the stick of Bryant. We have a partial breakaway. And Roach came over and broke it up. What a play by Roach. Made up for the Aaron pass and came back and poked that away. Absolutely. You can't feel any better than that. You made the mistake, but you made up for it. Bauman now swings behind the South Hadley net. Back to the point to Bowie Harris. Harris over to Bryant. Bryant on the right point. Bryant. Wrist shot. Tipped in front. Blocked. Far boards. Roach now with it. Roach to O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan. Gets it back, top of the dot, O'Sullivan, wrist shot, saved by Seagal, saw it all the way. Nice play, he went down butterfly style and caught that run right over his head. Greenfield's doing, a, Greenfield's doing a really good job just controlling the puck and handling the puck. I, and I'm seeing it from all three lines, they have their, their third line out there now. They're just working the puck so well against the South Hadley team. Pruzak, Barnes, and Lenoy out there along with McColdrick on the right point. And Paul on the left point. Puck skips over Mikey Stick. McCullough back to get on in his own end. 1.14 to go on the man advantage. 7.36 to go in the period. McCullough loses control behind the net temporarily. 
and skates it up. Mikey McColdrick up the right side. Mike McColdrick got ahead of steam. Breaks into South Hadley territory. McColdrick centering pass, backhander. Just missed and the net dislodged as he had Lenoy camped. Nice play there, McGoldrick took it end to end. And everyone's sitting here watching him see if he's gonna take that shot. He slides it over to Lenoy's. Nice lay by Seagal and he did the right thing. He kicked the, kicked the post off the moor. And that's a couple of times that McColdrick has tried to go coast to coast. He can kick and skate. And he moved the, ball, the puck nicely up there. So it's gonna be the power play unit back out there. It's gonna be Bauman centering O'Sullivan and Aiden Roach face off to the left of Seagal. Back to Roach. Roach with it now to Bryant. Bryant comes away. Bryant at the point, at the center, shot. Deflected up and out of the rink as Ryan just rifled it from the top of the slot. He's got a solid shot. He did a nice, nice job sliding to his left just to get an open ice, open uh, view to the goaltender and goaltender made a good save, just happened to hit the ceiling. Face off to the left of Seagal. Back to the point. Roach now with it. Roach cycling on the near boards. Roach goes into the corner, stops, cuts. Roach gives it to O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan coming out of the corner. O'Sullivan, tough angle, hits the side of the net. O'Sullivan stays with it. Back to the point. Rister blocked in front and deflected around to Roach. Roach at the right point. Aiden Roach now with it. Roach, high slot. One-timer hit the side of the net. And the net dislodges yet again. And they'll face it off to the right of Seagal with 19 seconds left on the man advantage. All the puck has been on the Greenfield sticks. They're controlling the play. They're controlling the puck. They're doing a good job. They're again changing lines. I really like how they're switching these lines up and they're keeping them, keeping them fresh. And every line's been effective. There has not been a bad pairing yet tonight that I've seen for Greenfield. No, and they're playing a good team tonight, and it's nice to see. They're getting some confidence today. Barnes and Pruzak back to the point. Wrist shot blocked in front, tipped wide. Just missed. And Pruzak now on the far boards. Pruzak back to McColdrick. McColdrick to Pruzak on the right wall. Pruzak now. Six seconds left in the man advantage. Pruzak swings around. Switches. Oh, very a tripping call. They got away with one there, I think. So they swing the net with it. We're back to five on five. Back to the point. McColdrick, top of the slot. McColdrick pushes it to the right boards. McColdrick back. One timer. Couldn't get the shot off. Second effort. Pushed wide. Backhanded to Barnes. Barnes down in the corner. Barnes to Lenoy behind the net. Lenoy battling for it. Bauman's able to keep it in temporarily, but it skips back out. That's the first time the puck's been out of the south half of the end for about two and a half minutes. Lenoy dumps it in. Quick line change for Greenfield on the fly. Brian Bauman on a four check bumped off the puck. Goes back around. O'Sullivan bumps. Roach out there again. O'Sullivan back to Bryant. Bryant slap shot just wide. Comes around to Bowie Harris on the left point. Harris pushes it down low. Bauman after it. Bauman on the far boards. Spinning away. Wrist shot blocked in front and cleared as Bauman outdueled three South Hadley defenders to get that shot off. Greenfield's controlling the entire play right now. South Hadley's not even touching the puck. Bryant moves in. Tough angle shot blocked by Seagal. O'Sullivan now with it. O'Sullivan comes out. The dot shot saved. Segal makes the save and covers in a shooting gallery right now. It is a shooting gallery, but South Hadley's hanging around. They're only up by two goals. We feel like this is a one-sided game, but the scoreboard's saying something different. If South Hadley's able to get a good bounce, lucky bounce, breakaway, get that puck in the back of the net, we're going to go to the third period, 2-1. to one. Barnes line out there with Bowie Harris and Bryant at the point. And now, what I think we've got... Too many men? Well, they wanted to make a quick sub, did South Hadley. So then they got Laramie back out there. Probably a good idea. He's been one of their better players tonight. Face off to the right of Seagal. Back to the point. Bowie Harris knocked off the puck. Harris goes back to get it in his own end. Backhands it up the boards. Barnes now with it. Barnes broken up at the blue line by South Hadley. Now Barnes gets it back. Two on one break. He has Pruzak on the right. Barnes shot blocked in front. He follows the rebound behind the net. Barnes starts to slide it in front. Bruzak camped. Shot blocked in front. Bryant now trying to keep it in, but he can't. And Bruzak back after it. Slams it back into the South Hadley end. No offsides. 4.41 to go in period two. All Greenfield in this period. No scoring as yet for the Wave. Neon now with it. Pushes it up ahead. And they backhand it into Greenfield territory. Bryant now lifts it up and out. 
And they overskated to South Hadley at their blue line, but it slammed back in. The Greenfield end by Laramie as the Tigers need a line change. And Greenfield now with it. Up ahead to O'Sullivan on the right wing. O'Sullivan looking to feed Bowman too far ahead. And Cameron Pete after it. Now Pete and Bauman bang around behind the net. They push it up to Ryan Tucker, and Tucker is able to headman it to Silabocos, who sends it right back down, does Greenfield, to Bauman. Bauman knocks it into the South Handley end. Bauman on the forecheck. Swings it around the near boards. Cycles it back down low. Tried to for Roach. Broken up, though, nicely by Aiden Sullivan, who was able to clear the zone for South Hadley. Kevin Bauman back after it. MJ Pollen pushes it up ahead to O'Sullivan. Going to come all the way down to Seagal. First one on it, though, is Roach. Seagal is able to clear the zone. O'Sullivan now winding up into South Hadley territory. O'Sullivan looking to slide it in front. Barnes out there with him. Back to the point. MJ Pollen tees it up. Slapper. Wide, Roach with it, tough angle shot, saved by Seagal. Ballon, puck in front over the stick of Barnes. He was right there with an empty net. Barnes after it on the far boards. O'Sullivan now with it. O'Sullivan, high slot, deeks away, slides it in front, puck on the doorstep, shot, save! Second save by Seagal and Barnes. What a play by Seagal. And here comes South Hadley. Brunel skating up, shot. Deflected into the corner by Bowman. Bowman bumps with Brunel as, oh, Seagal. Two big saves. Oh, he's keeping this game close, keeping South Hadley in it. Laramie after it on the near boards in his own end and is able to clear the zone. Up ahead it goes to Joey Seagal. High slot, Joey Seagal. Quick shot, saved by Riley Drew. He hangs on and covers with 2.30 to go in the second period. That puck uh, saved by Drew was sitting on top of Drew. South Hadley actually poked it in off of him. And I can't tell you if the whistle came first or the puck went in the net first. South Hadley reacted right away, but it looks like it's going to be a face-off to the uh, right of Drew. Face-off will be to the right of Riley Drew. And Greenfield's going to get a quick change. As McColdrick's going to come off. So Bryant is out there on defense. And it's the Bauman line, I believe, that's out there right now. So no scoring in this period, but the play definitely being carried again by Greenfield. It's all Greenfield. They're, they're winning every 50-50 puck. The puck is deflected into the corner. Bowie Harris after it for Greenfield. Puck goes behind the Greenfield. Ned Bryant slams it up the boards. Kept in, though, by South Hadley. That was Hambly who knocked it around. And Lenoy pokes it out. Looking for Barnes. Barnes now. Oh, he got knocked off the puck. Lenoy with it now. Lenoy into South Hadley territory. Lenoy got hooked on the way through. Lenoy on the short side looking to set up. Goes behind the net. He had Pruzak in front. Couldn't get it to him. Slap shot from the point. Big save by Seagal. Partially screened. Puck forced to the near boards. Bryant over there with Mazza. Now Bauman. Shot goes wide. Shooting gallery in the South Hadley end continues. And the Tigers have to ice the puck. We'll take a 30 second break. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield, brought to you by Gilmore and Farrell Insurance. Playback on Greenfield in the South Hadley zone. Shot by O'Sullivan over the net on a rolling puck. So O'Sullivan, oh, the puck skipped over his stick again. As South Hadley will be happy to get out of this period unscathed if they can. Puck dumped in. Penalty coming up on South Hadley again. This is either going to be interference or tripping as they haul down McGoldrick. It's going to be interference is the call. So the Tigers continue to have problems in the penalty box. It's a tough break. Greenfield's two for four. That's the difference in the game. They have two power play goals, both in the first period, both in their first two power plays. They're controlling the puck. They're controlling the puck five on five, like I said before. Now it's five on four, and South Hadley's content just to play the box, keep it on the outside. And Greenfield's had a shooting gallery. They just haven't been able to put it past uh, the goaltender. And they have a minute nine now to take a 3 0 lead in the third period. Ryan Tucker got the interference penalty. Back to the point. Shot saved by Seagal. Big rebound all the way back out to the right point to Harris. Harris cycles it down low. And this is the Barnes line out there again. Lenoy after it. Pruzak after it on the far boards. Pruzak pinned to the boards. The puck is tied up. Bryant comes over to help out, comes away with it. Bryant, wrist shot from the point. Wide of the net. Bryant gets knocked down. Harris now. Cycles it back down low to Barnes. Barnes comes back up to the high slot. Barnes poked out of the way. Nicely done by Brunel. 
and Greenfield will have to reset at the blue at the red line rather. Bryant pushes it open, but it's broken up by South Hadley in front of the Greenfield bench. Harris now goes cross ice to Bryant. Quick line change for Greenfield. They push it up the boards. Brian Bauman now on the right wing. Bauman stops. Bauman pushes ahead into the corner. Bauman slides in front and right on the desk doorstep. Oh, skipped over the net. It was right in the crease. Back to the point, Bryant wrist shot blocked in front. Turnaround shot by O'Sullivan and a save by Seagal. As the sticks go up between a Bauman, as Bauman starts jousting with Pete. But oh, it was right there for the taking, Todd. Another great opportunity. I think O'Sullivan thought he put it in the net. He, he fired it up to the uh, top shelf, just didn't go in. It just missed the crossbar. And Greenfield now just has five seconds left. We'll see what, if they set up a play here for that final shot. Five seconds left in the period, 56 to go in the man advantage. So they'll start the third with another power play. Bauman on the draw. Back to Roach. Roach, top of the circle. Shot saved by Seagal. Roach pumps his arm saying, oh, if I could have got that one a little bit lower, that might have been twine time. Nice play by Greenfield. Five seconds to get a solid shot off. is is difficult to do, and they did it right away. And now they only have one second left. They're actually going to pull the goaltender, see if they get a push it toward the net and see if something can happen. Everybody crashing the net here. Bauman on the draw. There's five Green Wave players clogging the slot. One of the shot. Oh, my God. He got the shot right off, and it was blocked by Seagal. That came as close to going in as you're going to get in a situation like that. I have to say, I see that play. I'm, like, wondering if it's ever going to happen, and, and that was the closest I've ever seen it. Brian Bauman very nearly lit the lamp again, but Greenfield will go into the locker room. Bauman goes over and taps the guy on the pad saying, nice save, buddy. I'm sure they practiced that. So we'll take a break. We'll come back, and we'll reset what happened in period number two between periods. Still Greenfield two, South Alley nothing. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield, brought to you by Gilmore and Farrell Insurance. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Arista. Arista Networks pioneered software-driven cognitive cloud networking for large-scale data center and campuses. Arista.com Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Webbs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. That second period was pretty much all Greenfield, and the shots on goal tell the story, Todd Howe. 17 to 4 for Greenfield, and, and I can't argue with those. I think they're pretty accurate. That makes a two-period total, 27 to 10. But the scoreboard, 2 nothing. It's still close. One lucky bounce, they're back in the game. It is still close, and it's surprising because in, in a game that's as lopsided as this, like, there could easily be five or six goals on the scoreboard, and one of the reasons there isn't is because number one in the nets for South Hadley, Anthony Segal, I mean, he he's basically played a butterfly style, but he's really been Johnny on the spot on a number of occasions in that second period. Yeah, and he's probably looking at himself saying, you know, they've got two power play goals on me. I'm at the disadvantage from the start on that. And both of them are good plays across the slot, tougher for the goalie to slide over. So he's done really well. Even strength, it's an even game. And the power plays, of course, as you mentioned, two for four with another one minute or so, 52 seconds to be exact. Uh, if Greenfield could knock one in, you would think that would probably be all she wrote. But like you said, one or two bounces. And we did see a couple of moments in that second period that were kind of scary. So that we... Harris turnover at the blue line that, that very nearly resulted in a breakaway. So Greenfield has played dangerously a couple of times, but for the most part, still a pretty solid period. It is, and I think it's tough for Drew. When, if you're in a game and you're only facing 10 shots, it, it's easy to kind of get relaxed and not be ready. But he stepped up to the plate when they had those opportunities. And Greenfield's done a good job. They had one bad play, and the defenseman was willing to take a penalty to make sure there wasn't a breakaway on Drew. I can say for personal experience, and this has been 30 years ago since I played the game, it's exactly a problem when you're in a situation like that where your team is just storming the other end. It's tough to stay engaged. But Drew has 
been equal to the task. He is 15 minutes away from his latest shutout. He's had a few zeros on the board this year for Greenfield. Yeah, he's done well. He's a really solid goaltender. He's got a good team in front of him, and the good thing is, is when you're so strong in the offensive zone, that's really playing defense. The other team's not getting the puck. Absolutely, and again, we mentioned the depth of Greenfield and the different line, uh, the lines that have worked. Lenoy, the Lenoy Barnes Prusak line, has really been forechecking very, very well. Uh, I think that 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 line has. You're going to see a lot more of them, I think, as the season goes on. Yeah, they're not missing a beat. Drop it down to the third line, which is a solid thing for Greenfield. They really have to get ready for the playoffs. You just never know what's going to happen. It, the flu's hit every team this year. If it hits Greenfield, they still got two solid lines. If they end up missing a line. And they've done real well. I think the last two games, like I said, they, they switched the lines up. They've scored 10 goals in two games. They've done solid, and there's no better feeling to be able to put that third line out there and breathe. A win today gives Greenfield 10 wins on the season, which qualifies them for postseason play. I don't think there was any question they were going to qualify for postseason play either. You know, they're undefeated right now in their league, and 10 wins get you in no matter what. So you don't want to think that's just you want to tune up, but you certainly don't want to, you, you want to try and get your line combinations squared away. What you don't want to do is get injured, and that's the thing I think is, is a big concern right now is, you know, when you're thinking postseason, you're thinking it's a physical game, it's a long season. You don't want to lose anybody to, to bad injuries. Yeah, you absolutely have to stay healthy, and it's a solid game. This is a great game because there's a lot of checking. It's, it's not a lot of poke checking, so we're hearing the bodies going, going into the boards, and, and they're playing well. It's, it's, I haven't seen anybody really in a dangerous spot, and the penalties have been... Legitimate. They haven't been dirty. Both goals, of course, coming in the first period. Both power play goals. Sean O'Sullivan and Kyle Byrne on the tip in from the uh, shot from the point by Mike McGoldrick. That's the difference right now. We'll take another break. We'll come back, talk more about the third period, and get you set for it. Hockey night in Greenfield. Greenfield leaves South Hadley 2-0. This is brought to you by Gilmore and Farrell Insurance. Back out here at Collins, William Arena, Chris Collins, Todd Howe, our studio producer is Dave Reno. Um, in this, coming into the third period, as you mentioned, you know, Greenfield's up 2-0, although I think the, the game's been more lopsided than the score will indicate. Uh, what do you think South Hadley has to do to get back in this game if they can? I think South Hadley has to start taking some chances. They're playing, they're allowing Greenfield to play on the outside, and I think they just got to get on that outside, hit the body, and try and get a breakout. Uh, the good thing for Greenfield is they got 52 seconds to really control the play and set the tone for this period. And it's going to be tougher for South Hadley to kind of get out of that. They, they just need a lucky break. They need a bounce to go their way. They've, they've got 10 solid shots on Drew. He's done well. But they, they have to come out on fire. Again, to reset shots on goal in the second period, 17-4 in favor of Greenfield. And it did seem like uh, the, the, the lion's share, again, of the, of the play, as in the first period, was played in South Hadley's end of the ice, and Greenfield really had the puck literally on the, on the doorstep in the crease. They just couldn't quite get it to convert. No, they. we talk about the shots 17-4, to 4, but the goals were 0-0. Zero, zero. So it was a solid period. South Hadley's got to be like, hey, we got away with one that period, and let's come out in the third and get back to our game. We'll take one more one-minute break, come back, and bring you the final frame of this one. Greenfield leads South Hadley 2-0. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield, brought to you by Yilmore and Farrell Insurance. Both teams back out on the ice for the start of the third period. Again, Greenfield will start this period as they did the second period with about 52 seconds. In fact, exactly 52 seconds on a man advantage as South Hadley with their fifth penalty and the fifth power play for Greenfield. Greenfield 2 of 4 so far in this game. It'll be interesting to see what power play combination they bring out. They'll bring out that top line again. They've gotten some solid shots. They've used the D well. Bryant's been getting some Good wrist shots off. He hasn't really fired that slap shot off the glass yet. So they're going to come out, it looks like, with the Bauman line. Bauman with O'Sullivan and Roach. And back on defense. Actually, they're going to run Bowie Harris up on the left wing. But my guess is Harris will drop back to the left point after the faceoff. So O'Sullivan will start off on the left point. And Bauman. Forces it in, and O'Sullivan, the first one in on the four check on the left wing. And South Hadley is able to clear the zone. All the way back down behind Riley Drew, back to get it is Jake Bryant. And Bauman will swing it behind his own net. Bauman up the right side. Bauman over the red line. Bauman over the blue line. Into the territory. Bauman swings the net, tries to stuff. And the puck squirts loose and out of the zone. Good bid, though, by Bauman. 
Bryant back to get it for Greenfield. Bryant, Mazza now hassling him. Bryant goes up the boards to Aiden Roach. Roach overskates the puck temporarily, comes back to get it, and clears the zone. Roach now, past center ice. Roach up the left side. Roach stops and cuts. Has a slide in front, ends up on the stick of a South Hadley player. This is Mazza, and Mazza is able to skate it out. Drops it back to the point in the high slot. Quick shot and a save by Drew. A shorthanded bid there for South Hadley. Actually, just as the power play expired. Yeah, Ryan Tucker came out of the penalty box, joined the rush, three on two rush. Got a good shot off on Drew, and Drew stayed alert. 14 minutes left, and Drew's keeping it a two goal game. Face off to the right of Riley Drew. Barnes on the draw for Greenfield. Wins it. Goes to Bauman. Kevin Bauman now. And they come back around the Greenfield net. And the puck squirts out in the high slot. Puck is loose. As Greenfield running around a bit in their own end. And they finally clear. Lenoy pushes it up ahead. And Lenoy now on a four check left wing. Lenoy barreling in. Shot blocked by Seagal. Puck loose in front. Shot blocked in front. And a Greenfield player got hammered behind the play. No call. And that was Lenoy who got right back up. He got laid out. Nowhere near the puck. Now the uh, referees were watching the puck on that one. McGoldrick now with it. High slot. McGoldrick, one on two. Tries to force it into the corner. He does. Puck comes back around O'Sullivan now on a four check. On the right wing board. Back to the point. A wrist shot from the point. Deflected wide of the net. And Pruzak gets off the ice. Back to the point. McGoldrick, one timer. And a glove saved by Seagal. He hangs on. They'll face it off to his left with 13.05 to go in the game. A little better play by South Hadley in that. Greenfield didn't control the play in the offensive zone. But on the other side, South Hadley didn't get it out of the zone either. They're actually going to face it off to the right of Seagal. And on the draw is Adam Savoy for Greenfield. Savoy and O'Sullivan and Roach out there the line now. Puck ends up pressed behind the net. O'Sullivan after it. Savoy is after it. Centering pass goes right through the crease. Nobody there, though. And South Hadley is able to clear up to center ice. And they lose control. Mazza now. Shot and a save. A turnover results in a scoring opportunity. Bowie Harris clears it up the boards, and they skip it out. Now Roach on a four-check. Roach has Savoy with him. Roach goes around the defenseman. Short side, tries to stuff it. Gets knocked down for his trouble. Puck goes behind the net. O'Sullivan battling for it. And South Hadley... Able to take it back. This is Brunel. Able to clear it. Cross ice. And they move it up ahead. Joey Seagal now with it after it. Being guarded by Roach. Backhanded into Greenfield territory. Now O'Brien backhands it up the near boards to O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan across the middle with it. O'Sullivan beats one man. Beats two. Poked off the puck. He was bearing in. O'Sullivan still with it. Battling for it at the blue line. And it's cleared out of the zone. Chip back in by O'Sullivan. Greenfield clears. 11.55 to go in the game. And the Tigers now will wind it up in their own end. Cameron Pete skips it out to center ice. Bauman there. Bauman knocked off the puck by Mion. Mion slaps it down behind Drew. MJ Pollen after it into the corner. He bumps with Joey Seagal. Takes him down. Puck loose in front. Mion can't get the shot off. Again a turnover in the high slot. Greenfield's living dangerously, Todd. They are. They've given the puck away two or three times, and they've all resulted in scoring opportunities. Knight now skates it out. Headman pass. Wrist shot wide of Seagal. Knight following the fort, the play behind the net. And they still scrum behind the net, trying to knock it loose. Back to the top of the slot. Bauman shot over the net. Rebound. Kevin Bauman forces it into the corner. Centering pass blocked and skated around the net by South Hadley. Joe Mion's able to clear it up to center ice. Back after it's Pollen. Pollen to Kevin Bauman. Back to Pollen in their own end. MJ. Headman pass too far ahead. This is going to be icing. We'll take a 30-second break. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield. Brought to you by Gilmore and Farrell Insurance. Back to the point. Pete with the shot. Backhander in front. And Greenfield's able to clear the zone as South Hadley had a good bid there. Pruzak now. Whoa! No call. 
That looked like a hook to me. Shot over the net, rebound comes around. Refs have swallowed the whistle as it appears. I, I think they believe there's been enough power plays. Lenoy slides it in front, shot, score! <laughs> Looks like Pruzak on that. Pruzak got a bang, bang pass and rifles it home and it's three nothing Greenfield. Greenfield scores their first non-power play goal and it comes from that third line we've been talking about all night. You want to put them out there, you want to feel comfortable with them. The coach has got to feel comfortable with them tonight. This is this is a really solid game by this third line. Shane Pruzak lights the lamp. So Sullivan, Barnes, and Pruzak, the goal scorers tonight. And Greenfield extends the lead to 3 0. Little insurance, 10 11 to go in the game. Face off at center ice. Savoy now pushing it into Greenfield territory, to South Valley territory. And here come the Tigers. Up the right side, this is Mion. Shot goes wide of the net. Fireboards, Ryan Tucker after it. Tucker trying to set up Mion behind the net. Push to the fireboards. And Greenfield unable to clear. Now they do. Mion slams it back down behind the Greenfield net. Up the boards to Roach. Roach flips it up and out to center ice. O'Sullivan on a four check. O'Sullivan, shot, save! And covered by Seagal as O'Sullivan out dueled the defenseman and got a quick shot off. Wait, is he quick? I think Sullivan's shot actually went just under the mouth of Seagal. I think he got that right in the neck. That's no fun. No, he's holding his neck right now, just kind of uh, feeling it around. In most cases, unfortunately, with high school hockey, there's not many backup goaltenders in this league. So I think they're going to give him a minute to kind of get him uh, able to move forward. Well, that was one of those situations where the puck was bouncing. I don't know that O'Sullivan got good wood on it, but even a floating puck or a bouncing puck in the throat is not a lot of fun. No, and they're taking their time here and giving him a, a minute to recover. He seems to be all right. Referee conferring with the timekeeper. Faceoff will be to the left of Seagal. 9.27 to go in the game. Greenfield leads 3-0. The Bauman line is going to be out there. Bauman with Sammy Knight. And it looks like Porter Clancy on the right wing. Draw goes back to Pollen. Pollen, wrist shot through a screen, goes wide. The far boards. Kevin Bauman after it. Knocked down. That's going to be a high stick, and they're going to bring it back down to the Greenfield end as Sammy Knight went up high to get that floating puck. Yeah, he just wasn't thinking on that. He really didn't have to do that. There was no one around him, but he knocked it down to his stick, and now he's going to give South Hadley an offensive zone faceoff. Faceoff will be to the left of Riley Drew. Barnes line comes back out for Greenfield. Puck forced to the boards. Squirts loose. Mazza with it. Mazza in the center. Shot saved by Drew right on the doorstep. Good bid there. Back to the point. Slap shot blocked in front. And Barnes skates it out for Greenfield. That's going to be offside as the puck scored it out. And they'll face it off at the blue line with 8.58 left. Solid opportunity for South Hadley there. Quite a shot from the point on that. That was uh, Laramie. Luckily, no one went down for Greenfield on that one. As you're talking about not wanting to get injured, that was yeah. a nice little shot right at ankle level. That was a, that was a wicked slap shot. Face off, goes to center ice. McGoldrick now, McGoldrick pushes it into South Hadley territory. McGoldrick in the corner. Trying to back it up, McGoldrick now with it. Trying to slide it in front, backhander, score! As Camp was Sammy Knight, spinning backhander, it's four nothing. We now have scoring from all three lines of Greenfield. You can't ask for a more balanced attack by that. So they have two power play goals. Now they have two regular, or five on five goals. They're controlling this play, and I think this game might be in hand with 8.44 left. Sammy Knight from Mike McColdrick out of the corner. A spinner Rooney backhander in. 4 0. Face off at center ice. The Savoy line is out there. And the draw controlled by Greenfield. This is Adam Roach now. Or Aiden Roach, rather. Aiden pushes it into South Hadley territory. The Tigers are able to clear. Roach now skates it. 
at center ice. Roach beats one man. Three on three. Roach backhands it in front. It goes behind the net looking to set up Savoy. And South Hadley is able to clear it out. Harris after it for Greenfield. Pushes it up to O'Sullivan. And South Hadley slams it back in. That's Ryan Tucker behind the net now. Bryant, Bryant being pursued by Mion. Bryant goes up the boards. Roach with it. Roach now goes back up the near boards. Kept in by Laramie at the point temporarily. And now Roach skates it out. Aiden Roach coming out with O'Sullivan. Two on one break. Roach and O'Sullivan. They're on side. Wrist shots just wider than that of Seagal as Roach took the shot as he had O'Sullivan as the trailer. Tucker dumps it in. This is going to be icing. We'll face it off at the other end with 7.39 to go in this one. Great bounce attack from Greenfield this afternoon. They played really well. Icing. South Hadley's just looking for something. And they're just throwing the puck out. They're almost in desperation mode now. Face off to the right of Seagal. The Barnes line is out there for Greenfield. Draw goes back. One timer by Bauman goes wide of the net. That's Kevin Bauman. Barnes on a four check. Behind the net, along with Lenoy. Lenoy now battling for it at the dot. A lot of bumping going on in the near boards. And South Hadley is able to clear up ahead. Pollen now. Mazza pushing it into the corner. Pollen goes after it. Slam back around to the point. Aiden Sullivan. Shot is blocked. That was Pete, excuse me, with the shot. Blocked in front. Cleared out. Tigers winding up. Brunel with it now. On his own blue line. Crosses the red line. Brunel into Greenfield territory. Brunel loses control. And it's going to be a hooking call on Greenfield. So it's going to be a power play for the Tigers as they look to spoil this Riley Drew shutout opportunity. Yeah, this is their chance. They've got a late power play. There's 6.50 left in the period. And their only chance to get back in this game is to really ring one up. And we've noticed all game they've been using the points against some shots back there. But Greenfield's done a good job just compiling that box closer together. And, and the puck's not getting through to Drew. Porter Clancy gets called for the hook. Face off to the right of Riley Drew with 6.50 to go in the game. Two minutes on the man advantage. And South Hadley now. Mazza in the corner battling for it. And McGoldrick trying to knock it loose, and they slam it out of the zone. <laughs> that was coming right at me. Yeah, I don't think you notice there's glass and netting between <laughs> us. We're good, buddy. <laughs> yeah, We're good. Okay, We're good. safe. Uh, it's been a while since a puck has flown at me with that kind of speed. And puck, uh, Bauman now is able to take it. Takes a bump at the end of the play there by Seagal. And South Hadley will start from their own end. 1.30 to go in the man advantage for the Tigers. Mazza now with it at center ice. Mazza into South Hadley territory. Big hit from behind by Jake Croto of Greenfield. Puck with the fireboards. Croto goes in hard again on Mazza. So Croto getting some minutes out there, some ice time, making it worth his while. Mazza now with it in the corner. Mazza at the dot. Mazza, top of the circle. And the center ring pass. Little give and go was blocked and slammed out of the zone by Brian Bauman. 48 seconds to go on the man advantage. 5.36 to go in the game. Brunel hit by Paulin. Oh, Savoy gets knocked down. As Jake Bryant now will slam it into South Hadley territory. Takes a bump from Meon. Tigers may get one more whack at it here. Mion loses it, now gets it back at center ice. Mion into Greenfield territory at the far boards. Mion, shot saved by Drew, deflected to the far boards. Sullivan with it now at the right point for South Hadley. Puck skirts in front, it's loose, and cleared to the near the far boards, rather. After it's Matt Wilhite, shot from the point, goes out of the rink, and they'll face it off, and the penalty is over. Penalty just expired as the uh, shot went up, hit the uh, netting behind the net. And with 4.49 left to play, 4 nothing Greenfield, they're playing solid. We'll see if they get a little more defensive here and uh, try and support Drew on this. Face off to the right of Riley Drew. The Bauman line is out there. 
for the wave. And the draw is taken by Greenfield. McColdrick. Excuse me, that's uh, not McColdrick. That's Roach behind the net. Puck squirts out of the rink again. And they'll face it off again. Yeah, it looks like that puck is actually out of the net. Lucky fan walking away with souvenirs, as they say. And that puck's not coming back. Nobody <laughs> no, can I don't it think it is. Yeah. You it's have not. to give the puck back. <laughs> Face off, I think, is going to be outside the zone. It's going to be at the blue line. 434 to go, 439 rather to go in the game. 4 0 Greenfield. Barnes now on the draw for the wave. Goes back to McGoldrick. Mikey with it now, hanging on to it. And he's able to clear it all the way down to the South Hadley end. Pruzak on a four check after it. Now Barnes at center ice. Pruzak. Pruzak gets tripped, no call. McColdrick back after it. McColdrick behind the net for Greenfield. To Illinois, Illinois, knocked down by Sullivan. Puck squirts cross ice, and Bauman skates it up for the wave. And no offsides as it's waved off as Greenfield clears the zone. And South Hadley pushes it up ahead. McColdrick back after it. Uh, and it gets knocked down into the Greenfield end. McCulloch behind the net. Puck squirts loose. Lenoy backhands it behind the cage. And up ahead, but not out. Kept in by South Hadley. Back to the point. Sullivan now with it. Sullivan skates it. Shot through a screen. Knocked down. And Bauman headmans to Barnes. Barnes, hold down. Penalty coming up on South Hadley as Bauman has it. Drew headed to the bench for the extra skater and Bauman still has it. Bauman, it goes out of the zone. Penalty coming up on South Hadley for a trip as Barnes might very well have had a breakaway had he not been impeded. Yeah, I was watching the referee on this to see if they are going to give him an actual penalty shot. They didn't get him on the first trip. They would have gone the second time when he got up and he got hauled down again. Right. That's Aiden Sullivan who will go off for two minutes. So for two of the last three eleven of this one, Greenfield will be on a power play unless they're able to convert. Well, we talked about when, once Greenfield switched these lines up, they're putting five goals a game on. They score on this power play. They'll have that fifth, fifth one in the back of the net. Bauman back to Bryant at his own blue line. Cross ice pass to Bowie Harris. Harris into South Hadley territory on the right wing. Harris behind the net. Harris tries to stuff it. Seagal blocks it, so Sullivan now behind the net battling. And it's cleared out by South Hadley all the way down to the Greenfield end. Riley Drew now touches it up behind the net. And Jacob Bryant, head man pass. Louis Harris, a slapper, gloved down by Seagal. Cleared up the boards, but not out, kept in. Bauman giving go to O'Sullivan, cross ice shot just wide. Bounding behind the net, battles for it. O'Sullivan now goes back to the point to Bryant. Bryant, wrist shot, saved by Seagal. Rebound deflected into the corner. Roach now. O'Sullivan out of the corner, shot gloved down by Seagal. He'll hang on to it and they'll face it off to his left with 105 to go in the man advantage. 2.15 to go in the game. Greenfield's got a great team effort here. This is a lot of fun to watch. This is, uh, it's been one-sided. Drew's played well. The score is only 4 nothing. It, it, it sounds crazy being only 4 nothing, but the shots have got to be 35-12. to yeah, Absolutely. Barnes on the draw for Greenfield. That Barnes line's been on fire tonight. Draw controlled temporarily by South Hadley. Now a steal. McGoldrick in the slot. McGoldrick, oh, could not get the shot off. A great steal by Mikey. And he gets hit from behind. That's a penalty coming up. As it's going to be a two-man advantage for Greenfield. Back to the point it goes. Pruzak. Back down low. Barnes slides it in front. Nobody there. Back to the point to Pruzak. Pruzak still has it. 1.45 to go in the game. 33 seconds to go in the man advantage. It's six on four. Shot goes wide. McGoldrick from the far boards. And that one deflects out of the rink. And we are going to have a penalty. It's going to be a two-man advantage for at least 26 seconds. Yeah, Mike McGoldrick got cross-checked in the corner. 
And it's going to give Greenfield five on three for 26 seconds, five on four for the rest of the game, and an opportunity. You know, you look at the scoreboard, it's four or nothing. There's no reason. They don't need to put another one in the back of the net. Let's give your goal tender a favor and just control the puck. Cameron Peake gets the ticket for the cross check, so it's going to be two man advantage for Greenfield for 26 seconds or until they score, if they do. Back to the point. Bryant now with it. Bryant, wrist shot, saved by Seagal, saw it all the way, and they'll face it off with 1.30 to go in the game. So Greenfield's going to win this game. The question is will there be a goose egg on the board at the end or not for Riley Drew? It's always nice to get one for the goaltender, right? <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Bryant shot glove saved by Segal. I didn't have a lot of goose eggs on my board when I played, unfortunately. <laughs> Segal gloved that one out of that. That was the, a quick wrist shot by... God, Bryant has one of the hardest wrist shots I've seen in a long time in high school hockey. Bauman back to the point. O'Sullivan with the shot actually from the low slot and the save by Seagal. He hangs on to it again. Tekken, 10 seconds to go on the two-man advantage. And 120 to go in the game. Greenfield's controlled the face-off. Last three face-offs gotten quality shots off. Bauman now to O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan with it. O'Sullivan spins away from containment. O'Sullivan at the dot. Tries to slide it in front. Back to the point. It goes. Harris now with it. Harris over to Roach. Roach to O'Sullivan as they're cycling in the high slot. O'Sullivan wrist shot saved by Seagal. And it looks like they're calling Greenfield in the crease. They're going to bring the face off outside the zone. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was that or the net was dislodged. It was hard to tell, but I think you're right. There was a player in the crease. They were camped off a low. 120 to go. Well, 55 seconds to go on the game clock. 120 to go on the penalty. So, barring a, a goal here, Greenfield will skate five on four to the end of this game. Kevin Bauman now into South Hadley territory. Behind the net. Bauman with it still. Circling. Knocks it back down low. Cycling down low. Another trip as Barnes or Lenoir hit the ice. Back to Barnes at the point. Barnes, wrist shot, glove save by Seagal. Knocked wide. 30 seconds left. Greenfield steals. Lenoir. Lenoir at the dot. Backhander saves Seagal. Puck goes behind the net. 20 seconds left. And the backhand into the far boards does Lenoy McGoldrick after it. McGoldrick cycles down behind the net, slides it in front. Puck is loose. Backhander saved by Seagal. Three seconds left. And that's how this one's going to end. The final score, the Greenfield Green Wave with their 10th win of the season. Defeat the South Alley Tigers by a count of 4-0. We'll take a one-minute break and come back and wrap it, wrap it up. This is Hockey Night in Greenfield, brought to you by Gilmore and Farrell Insurance. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by... Arista. Arista Networks pioneered software-driven cognitive cloud networking for large-scale data center and campuses. Arista.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Webbs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. Back out here at Collins Wood Arena. Chris Collins, Todd Howard, studio producer is Dave Reno. The Greenfield Green Wave continue their winning ways. They've now won five of six. Another shutout for Riley Drew. They beat the South Hadley Tigers by a count of 4-0. And I'll tell you, Todd, how you're not going to find many games played better than this one for Greenfield. 
No, Greenfield play well. And, and South Hadley's no slouch. I, I'd say they're one of the top four or five teams in Division 3A in Western Mass. They played solid, but Greenfield's controlling the puck outside the play. South Hadley, if you were to count how many minutes they actually had control of the puck, it weren't, weren't that many. They went, uh, Greenfield went two for seven on the power play. The first two goals in the first period. Uh, O'Sullivan with a goal. Also Barnes with a goal on the tip in from the McGoldrick shot. And then two goals in the third period. Shane Pruzak lit the lamp, as did Sammy Knight with that backhander on the feed from Mike McGoldrick. So a solid performance. Riley Drew did a good job. I mean, the, the shots on goal tell the tale. I mean, the, the game was played most of the night in the South Hadley end of the building. Yeah, Greenfield had outshot South Hadley in the third period, 14 to six. They had the shot advantage every period. They played strong, and what I'm most impressed with it was a balanced attack, all three lines. He's rotating three lines, which is what you need. When you come down to playoff time, if you're gonna close game and you're going to overtime, you need those three lines. You can't rely on two lines. You're just gonna win them out. Depth is important in any aspect of any kind of sport, but especially in hockey. If you've got three functioning lines, and you've got two or three sets of defense that you can interchange. I mean, he was not only was he double shifting and changing the different the lines combinations, he also was switching out his defensive pairing. Sometimes you put Harris out there with Bryant. Uh, sometimes you put McGoldrick out there, you know, with uh, with uh, two or three other partners. It's just uh, it's good to be able to have those options. And clearly, Greenfield has those options right now. And they weren't trying hard to match up. It wasn't like he said, oh, wait, there's a, a weaker line out there. Let's put the third line out there. No, he put the third line out there whenever he wanted to. Absolutely. So Greenfield notches their 10th win of the season, and we are back in this building a week from tonight as Chicopee Comp comes to town. We'll be on the air, I believe, with the pregame show right around 625, unless they change the time of that game as well, like they did with this one. But a big win for Greenfield. It was a lot of fun and a great game to watch. And by the way, if you didn't get a chance to hear this game or watch it, you'll be able to watch it on YouTube coming up in the next couple of days, courtesy of the FCAT media page at YouTube.com. FCAT's Kevin Murphy is here filming a simulcast, and you'll be able to hear our call and watch the game on YouTube, again, within about 48 hours from this broadcast. But Greenfield wins 4-0 over South Valley. For my broadcast partner, Todd Howard, studio producer Dave Reno, thanks for listening, and thanks for watching Hockey Night in Greenfield.